Let's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today we're talking about Ascendancy. Ziggy D revealed the Scion Ascendancy tree, the Ascendant, and it's bonkers. It's crazy. For those of you who don't know, basically what they did was they made it so the Scion can pick between two condensed versions of the trees, or, this part's insane, she can pick one of the smaller iterations of the tree, and then she can choose to start on the bigger skill tree from that path. So she could branch out from the Scion, and then branch out from the Witch, let's say. And this has a crazy effect. I think it's way more impressive than her being able to choose from everything. It makes a lot of sense. But I figured we'd just do a brief review of all the skill trees and then sort of discuss the crazy combinations that could go on here. Starting off with the Duelist compressed tree she can get. Slayer, 30% increased damage to rares and uniques, amazing, that's amazing. 10% overkill leashes life, it's pretty good. Always stun on full life, good entry to combat. 50% increased attack speed while leeching, it's alright. This one, really solid. Gladiator, 30% block chance to spells, it's not that much, but it's okay, I mean it's a nice bonus. 3 to block chance, this is alright. 50% chance to cause bleeding on hit with attacks, eh, the chance to cause bleed on hit again, not that strong. 30% increased damage if you killed a bleeding enemy recently. I mean, that's good if you're stacking the bleeds. Champion, 10% chance to fortify on melee hit. 10% chance is good enough. If you want fortify, you need fortify. You don't need a chance. 20% chance to taunt on hit. That's actually pretty cool because taunt's kind of hard to come by as a mechanic. You and nearby allies have 50% increased damage while you have fortify. See, that's why you need fortify all the time. 4% reduced damage taken from taunted enemies. So that's great if you're taunting. Nice little tankiness there. So basically what'll happen is... If you're a Scion, and you decide to path towards the Duelist, you can pick one of these three. And honestly, because she has so much choice, it doesn't actually matter that Gladiator and Champion are not that strong. Slayer is the best one, because of the rare and unique damage, and the stun enemies on full life is also pretty good. You could argue for Gladiator, because the spell block, I mean, if you scaled it, if you sort of specced into shields really hardcore on the tree, but still... The best one, Slayer, but that's all you need because the Scion can only pick one of the the subclasses within an area. She can't pick two witch ones, two duelist ones. She can only pick one. So only one of them needs to be good. These these are pretty cool. On to the Ranger. Ranger blows my mind. Kills me. Ranger kills me. 50% chance of projectiles piercing. Spark. Because you do this and then you can go up to a witch subclass. Because you can pick two. 20% increased projectile speed. Pretty nice. Projectiles gain damage as they travel farther, dealing up to 30% increase. Increase, not more, like the one on the Ranger tree, on the Ranger Ascendancy tree. Pretty sweet. Skills find an additional projectile, of course, because it wasn't good enough. This, the, the Deadeye one, very solid. Very good for Spark and that sort of thing. Pathfinder, 50% increased flash charges gained. That's really GG. 25% increased damage during flask effect, nice. 50% chance to avoid free shock and night and bleed and bleed. Whoa, the Pathfinder little subtree seeming pretty overpowered. 4% reduced elemental damage taken during blast effect. That's nice. Raider, I really like this one. 25% chance to avoid status ailments. Nice. 2% chance to dodge. Small number, but still a little bonus. 10% chance to gain French charge or kill. Powerful sat. I mean, if you really need French charges, this is good. You have phasing and onslaught while on full frenzy charges. So if you're playing a Frenzy build, you get Phasing and Onslaught. Basically seems like all of Raider in one point, it just seems better. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, Pacifism times three, maybe some snake bite hipster stuff, I don't know. But if you have zero Frenzy charges as your max Frenzy charges, you always have Phasing and Onslaught. You can always move through enemies. You always have 20% increased attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. Insane. I love these three. Any of them are going to be good choices. Deadeye, Pathfinder, or Raider. Really, really sick. On to which? Elementalist. 4% reduced elemental damage taken. Damage penetrates 5% of enemy elemental resists. So those first two are pretty low numbers, but still they're good stats. Considering you're going to get to pick two or path out of the witch if you want. Gain elemental conflux for, it says zero seconds, but that's obviously a typo. When you kill a rare unique enemy, I mean, eh. You're not going to kill rares that much, that, that's okay, but the conflux is you get the chill ignite shock, so I mean, it's a good bonus. Plus, you're getting everything else on here. 
30% increased damage of each golem type for which you have a matching golem. Again, it says each. Makes me think there's going to be multiple golems in the future. It says lightning in the bottom there. Lightning golem ink? I don't know. <laughs> Oculist. 20% increased max energy shield. <laughs> That's pretty good. 1% of energy shield regenerated per second. Energy shield, not life regen. It's not converted over. So this works with Vol Pact. That's insane. Enemies you curse have minus 15% chaos resist. I'm starting to read this stuff, and they seem better than the, better than the, the actual expanded trees themselves. Honestly, this stuff seems crazy. 20% increased damage if you've killed a cursed enemy recently. All that stuff. The Oculist is bonkers. Elementalist is cool, but I'm not... A, the Oculist is way cooler. The little small tree. You and your minions have... A necromancer. You and your minions have 4% re physical damage reduction. Like a 1 endurance charge. It's kind of okay. 50% increased effective offering spells. It's okay. Just buffs the haste, buffs the block if you use that. You and allies deal 50% increased damage while affected by auras you cast. Little mini haste because you're going to use auras, of course, if you're using minions anyway. You and your minions have 8% increased attack speed, cast speed if you've consumed or destroyed a corpse. Again, just more speed buff. Necromancer 1, not that intriguing. Oculus 1, definitely intriguing. Elementalist, eh, it's okay. On to the shadow. Start with Assassin. 1 to base crit. That's really good. That's basically going to put anything in a range where you can scale the crit quite reliably. Because 6% is a pretty... It's okay. It's a good enough base to go from. 40 multiplier against enemies on full life. Get that big first hit. 10% chance to gain a power charge on a hit against enemies that are on full life. This is only really going to be effective against packs. 10% really isn't enough. And it's only when they're on full life. So if they got ticked, like, you know, tapped by a dot, it won't affect anything. Your crits with attacks maim. Only attacks, not spells. Kind of disappointing. But maim is that 30% reduced slow. Okay, I mean, pretty nice if you're doing like a uh, temp chains, cursor, melee, they'll be super slow. I don't know. It's it's all right. Kind of cutesy, but the assassin still gets the crit. It's really nice. Saboteur. 20% increased cooldown recovery speed for throwing traps. Oh, the most important part of the saboteur tree made it onto the mini scion tree. Seems fair. 20% chance to create a smoke cloud when you place a mine throw a trap. And you get the smoke clouds just kind of automatically, so if you're throwing a bunch of traps, 20% chance, you're going to get it. Really sweet. 5% increased damage for each trap and mine you have. Again, seems unbalanced compared to the entire tree. And damage penetrates 6% LA wrist. I mean, LA resist if you did mines recently. That one's only mines. That one's not that good. Trickster. This one seems pretty weak to me, honestly. 30% increased life, mana, and ES recovery if you kill someone with damage over time. 20% more chance to evade when on full energy shield. 20% increased damage while you're not on full energy shield. Seems like these two talents should be switched, and it'd be a lot better, because they're kind of counterproductive. If It's kind of just common sense. It makes, you know... 100% increased mana regen if you've used a movement skill recently. Again, this is just going to make movement builds do better. But the trickster, I think, didn't... It's not that great. It's not that great. It's not as good as the actual expanded tree that the shadow's going to get. On to the Templar. Guardian. 3% block chance. It's okay. Every 10 seconds, remove Curse's elemental status. 10 seconds isn't that frequently, but still, I like that talent. You and allies have that mini haste, 12% attack speed, cast speed. And nearby party members have conduit, so you can still do the frenzy charge proliferating to your friends, or the full discharge build, you know, cool stuff like that. I really like that uh, nearby party members have conduit. I, I, I love that talent, and it's pretty cool that it made it onto the small tree, considering I think it's that great. Hierophant. 25% increased max mana. 25. It's a lot. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not... Gonna blow you away. Gain 8% of your max mana as extra en max energy shield. That's pretty nice, considering that you don't have to go through that stupid mini mind over m m mind over matter talent that's um, in the actual Hierophant tree. Skills in your helm can have up to one additional totem summed at a time. I, the flame totem, anything, the vertex, scale up with those things. Like I said it before, I'll say it again, that melee, that Ancestral Protector totem, <laughs> we'll have an extra one of him in the Bringer of Rain, little tree, make it as your sign. I don't know, man. Turns a chance to gain a power charge when you place a totem. If you're killing fast enough, if you're clearing fast enough, if you have enough totems to place at once, you're probably going to be able to stack power charges with this talent alone, which is overpowered. Very good. The higher fan is pretty solid. Inquisitor. 20% increased elemental damage. Take 8% reduced elemental damage while standing on Consecrated Ground. Consecrated Ground also gives you that uh, life regen if you didn't know. 120% increased crit against enemies affected by elemental status ailments. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> it seems seems better than the one that seems better than the one on the Inquisitor. I that's 
120 is not a small number. That's a good talent. 2% a chance to create concentrated, concentrated ground on kill. And yeah, concentrated ground is the, the life regen ground. I don't know how big it is, but it doesn't seem that great still. I think the Inquisitor is awesome just because the elemental damage, the reduced, and then the crit. Still good enough. On to the Marauder. Berserker. 1.5% of damage, not attack, damage. Leech does life. So if you're a Scion and you're going to be able to pick these two trees, or you're going to be able to path out of these different areas, you can get a caster build, you can go up towards the witch area, and then you can just spec into this tiny marauder, 1.5% damage. 1.5, that's the most we've seen in a long time on a single sort of allocation, and that's not a small amount. Goodbye, life leech on your links. This, that's the beginning. 5% increased damage taken. All right. 25% increased attack and cast speed if you've taken a savage hit. Savage hit is like, 20% of your life, and then 10% more damage. So yeah, for 5% increased damage taken, I'm pretty sure this is worth it. You could spec into this one, you could spec into Berserker, and then you could decide to path out of the Marauder. You could pick up a lot of life, and then you could just sort of manually path up to the Witch, and then you could pick up all the spell damage there. Alternatively, you could path out of the Witch using Path of the Witch, you could get a bunch of ES really efficiently, and and they just have the leech. And, well, no, because you couldn't path, you couldn't pick Path of the Witch unless, if you wanted to pick Berserker, you'd have to do the Marauder, or basically you could just pick Berserker, get the leech, and then do whatever else, get the spell damage somewhere else from another subclass, from Elementalist, I don't know, maybe even Inquisitor. You can pick whatever you want, and you're still going to be able to path out of the main Scion area, which is a good place to be anyway. Juggernaut. 30% increased armor. Pretty good number. I mean, decent amount. Cannot be chilled. Again, if you're, if you're doing an Occultist, and you end up going CI or something like that, and then you have cannot be chilled because they have a hard time dealing with status elements. That is very strong. That is a big deal. 10% chance to gain an endurance charge when you are hit. That's not that great. <laughs> That's terrible. Endurance charges are easy to get. You can't be stunned while you're at max endurance charges. That's insane. Again, if you're specking into Juggernaut and you get this, this chill and then you spec into something like Occultist and you're doing this whole CI thing, if you, have max, if you have max endurance charges, you're immune to stun, you're immune to chill. You just deal with two big problems of going CI right there. And it was one subclass. One of her two that she can pick for the Scion. And lastly, Chieftain. 50% chance to ignite. That's a lot of chance. 30% increased physical increased damage while you have a totem. Nice, the totem, the totem marauder theme. Gain 50% of physical damage is extra fire. I mean, yeah, the fire totem theme. Regen 2% of your life while you have a totem. Righteous fire, but not on the totem build, on you instead build. I don't know, the chieftain's okay. It's it's very specific, though. It's very it's very fire. It's very totem. You sort of have to build around it. So, in general, all of these trees are crazy. But what I really want to talk about is each of the trees is clearly good, right? But the more interesting part of this, well, not the more interesting part, the mm, the part that really grabbed my attention, the part that's made me theory craft for the past how many hours it's been out, is the fact that you can path out of a different place on the tree. You really got to think about this. Think about the Marauder. Think about the Witch. The Witch has very dense clusters of energy shield nodes. The Marauder has very high levels of life, very in very close proximity of each other, right? So... Well, that's a big deal. If you're in the Scion, you're in the middle of the tree already, which is advantageous. You can path into CI, correct? You can path into, you get CI, get all the energy shield. You can get 200% energy shield up by the witch area and just sort of get some of the life in ES nodes easily. 200% ES easily. You'll be at like 55 or 60 points, something really low. And then, what if you used Path of the Duelist? Path of the Duelist, and then you came down, and what does the Duelist have a lot of? Well, the Duelist has a lot of two-hander nodes. He has a lot of DPS two-hander nodes. Two-hander DPS CI, that wouldn't exist without it. And, what else is this Duelist close to? It's like, because you're playing CI and you're melee, it's like, that doesn't really make sense, I don't want to get stunned. Just go get, go get Unwavering Stance. It's crazy. The build potential is insane. 
So, you know, and an unwavering stance and CI are on complete opposite ends of the tree. Another example, resolute technique in acrobatics. I kind of want to play this character. If you really wanted to do this now, it's so inefficient. You save... This is the thing about the Scion with this new getting to path out of different areas. You save like 10 skill points at least. And on all those ascendancy trees, you didn't just see 10 points that you could put in to just get life, just get ES. With this, you can min-max your life amounts. Right side of the tree, it doesn't matter anymore because you can go to the left and the right side of the tree. Let's say you wanted to play a Scion and you wanted to do acrobatics and then resolute technique, blood magic. You can do it easily. You path out of the Scion, you go down left through the new life rectangle instead of the Scion wheel, the Scion rectangle, and then you path down the Marauder, get all the life you can, get resolute technique, get blood magic, because you path out of there manually from your Scion. You didn't, because it was pretty efficient getting there. You went through the life and all that. You didn't have to do the path of the Scion or anything. And then, let's, let's say you then do the Ranger, and you pick the mini condensed subclass of a dead eye. I would probably do Raider. I'm gonna love to do that. Maybe a Frenzy build. Frenzy, right? A resolute, uh, resolute technique. You know, acrobatics, blood magic, crazy stuff. You could get max frenzy charges. Be phasing. Be onslaught. You can get. And this is here's the thing. That whole you save ten skill points. It's the difference between having a full build with these multiple con like these multiple keystones synergizing together at a level 95 build and a level 85 build. We're talking 10 skill points. That's a big difference. Getting to level 95 is a lot harder than getting to level 85. So you come over here, you do the path of the ranger, you come out through the life and evasion nodes, you just get the bow stuff, you don't get the crit stuff because you're doing resolute technique, easy peasy. You get all the life along the right side of the tree. You path up, you get the life by by shadow. And then you get acrobatics, and it's easy. And then and look, you couldn't accomplish that right now in the game. This feature is amazing. I think the, it's a crazy big deal, though, because this really messes with the balance. The trees that were initially announced, the really strong theme ones, the big ones, the ones that are like Deadeye, the full tree, the ones that are like Elementalist, the full tree, those are really good for new players, I think. They have really strong class flavor, and they're going to have a, you're going to know when you're picking Deadeye what you're doing, you know, you're going to do projectiles, you're going to do that, the bow, the bow, you know, and if, with this though, with this Scion, this is just theory crafting out out the wall. Like, you can pick two of the trees or you can path around. And honestly, the pathing around is crazy. We've been playing with the same tree for so long. It hasn't changed very much, honestly. But now, some of these keystones you can re like across the tree and you can combine them with ease. This is crazy. I don't honestly care if everyone's playing Scion, because it's fun. It's fun to think of these builds. It's fun to play with the tree. And it's it's really cool that you still get to pick a condensed subclass at the same time. My mind is blown. I just, it's, it's crazy how above and beyond GGG went with the Scion. And like I said, I don't care if everyone's playing Scion. Do what you wanna do. Forget the meta. This is creativity. There is so much build choice and build customization here. Do what you want to do. You can do so much with these new tools and so much fun creative stuff. You can create the next amazing unique build because of there's just it's a, it's a it's free for all right now. Anyone can do anything. I'm so impressed with GGG. I don't care if everyone's playing Scion because I'm going to focus on what I'm playing. That's what matters and I'm going to be trying to come up with the coolest stuff I can. I'm sure you guys will be too, or if you want to just chill out and get some of the new, like, specific is tr specific trees, if you're a newer player, just to fit into that class flavor, that theme, I think it's a good thing. It appeals to people who love to theorycraft, and it appeals to people who love to just have that class flavor. New players, and hardcore players, and thinkers, and people who want that theme. The Ascendancy subclass system is amazing. I'm blown away by what they did with the Scion. I am extremely hyped. 
March 4th cannot be here sooner. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching.